Yo, what's going on YouTube? And in today's video, we'll be talking about odds and probability and how to put things more into your favor as you are learning how to play Ace. Uh, we're gonna do, be doing a couple more of these Ace videos, just kind of sort of just really going into the deck a little bit more, just giving a little bit more information about how to play and matchups and stuff like that because I really enjoy this leader. I've been play testing this leader um, <clears throat> quite a bit lately. And I uh, keep playing into Lucci and having really good matches with against Lucci in particular. Uh, very close games. It's very, very fun deck. It is a very, very fun deck. It's very fun to pilot, learn, and get the gist of it. Because once again, you learn this leader. It's a very powerful leader. But <clears throat> again, uh, just to go over this video, I just want to go over some odds and statistics with you guys. <clears throat> with the leader skill just to kind of sort of show you a leader's consistency so uh leader skill is don times two uh, look at the top five cards of your deck uh place up to one cost five character from them into your life face up and then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order at the end of your turn you trash all face up cards in your life seeing as this is a uh, big brother package that we're playing uh you play a couple of fives obviously you play the four brothers package uh, which is just or sorry play three brothers package which is really just a two brother package which is just luffy and ace <clears throat> but those are enough to where your leader ability consistently consistently can get off without you having to set up so to show that to you now i just like to show you the eyes and probabilities of like whiff with this leader so we're gonna go one two three four five cards for your hand and then we're going to go one two three four cards for your life we're not going to look at these right now because um uh we could look at the hand just to see if there's any brothers among them just to know the odds of probability but i just want to show you this without even looking at if there's any brothers in hand and in life now if there's a lot of brothers in hand and in life then you're going to have a higher probability of missing obviously but i just want to show you that like with this with just without with this knowledge alone uh, how often you will hit with this leader. So um, we're going to put every count face down and every nine hit face up. So here, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so we saw two brothers in this first one uh, using leader skill, which means there's a low probability that we will start to see more and more searches. So that was one hit there. All right, so we're going to go to the next one. All right, and that was another hit there. That was only one brother. So we actually feel good about seeing one brother in a search because that means that there's more of a probability we'll see more brothers in the deck. So anytime you see multiple brothers in one hit, then you know you know there's a less probability that you're going to see another brother. And also, I want to ask you guys something right now to just see if everybody was paying attention to what was just happening. How many aces and how many Luffy's have you already seen? All right, I'll give you a second to kind of sort of think about that and think about what we went through so far because that's going to be important later on in this video. So I want you to think about that right now and we're going to go over it. How many aces and how many Luffy's did you see? All right, so in this last search, we know that we saw one ace. So we know we saw one five. And this search before, we saw two Luffy's, I believe it was. <clears throat> or it was a Luffy and an ace. <clears throat> so with that in mind, you know that Again, again, you want to keep in mind this uh, order too, and you want to keep in mind what you've seen because it's going to come in handy as information later on in the game. So you know, you know that you saw that you bottom decked two of your aces, so that you now know that, like I say, if you're going through the game, and if you, uh, like, you wouldn't have bottom decked both of these for one. One of them would have been placed into life, and you'd probably be using it or have added it to your hand or trash or whatever the case may be. But again, just like I say, keep that in mind the the numbers that you hit because it's going to be important later on in this search so that say so that like right now i know that there's a lower probability that i'll see a rush ace out of all of my all of my brothers i know that there's a very low probability i'll see a rush ace because i've already seen two but we're going to keep on going one two three four five all right, so we saw three brothers in this search, which means like the rest of this does not have a lot of brothers. And it would not surprise me if we missed uh, in our next search. <clears throat> but again, keep in mind what you've seen. We've seen two Rocket Luffy's, one Blocker and one uh, Power Luffy. 
So, but that was three hits in a row. So one, two, three, four, five. And surprisingly enough, we do hit with that one, but we do hit, see two brothers in that search as well, which is block a rush. <clears throat> now that was, uh, let's just say that that is essentially four turns that you've went, because that's basically what this is. This is four turns that you've used leader ability, which means that you've went 20 cards through the deck. Uh, if you haven't, like I've said it before, if you haven't played any events or any GARP, then then there's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, like I say, let's just to say that you did play a GARP. So like this is minus that number by five. So that means 16. <clears throat> you don't know what 16 cards are out of your deck. And like I say, out of all of these, uh, you would have taken at least one of these out. So you always be minus a brother in the deck that you had seen previously. All right. So like I say, all this information is a lot. You know what I'm saying? Take it in as you will, digest it as you can, come back to it as you need to, because like I say, all of that plays a part in playing the game further on, okay? So always be mindful of that. But like again, we want one, two, three, four. We're gonna go for another five, just to kind of try to speed through this. One, two, three, four, five. There's another hit. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There's uh, another hit. So the odds of us uh, whiffing are becoming larger and larger. One, two, three, four, five. So there's a whiff. And I'm pretty sure that this last one is a whiff as well. It's a possible hit. Yeah, it's a whiff as well. So two, two whiffs. And how many brothers did we have in the hand? We still had, we still had three with, with, three brothers <clears throat> all right so this is our hand and this is our life so we had three brothers not in the deck inherently three brothers that are not in the deck already and we still were able to consistently hit one two three four five six times and we only missed twice so that's just that's just to give you an idea of how consistent the leader is without any of the additional setup that you have for the deck you really do want to play these setup cards though because they're very important for leader consistency and being able to hit instead of you just trying to high roll your opponent into hoping that you see a corresponding brother uh like i say you could play the deck like that <clears throat> but again you're playing more of a, a high rolly style as opposed to a strategy style which uh I, I personally do not recommend. Um, <clears throat> some of the really cool things about this deck, some of the really cool sequencing plays that you can make in here, and the, some of the reasons why I recommend playing cards like the Machino, and I recommend playing cards like this uh, this Nemo, uh, Nemo blocker. Did they call me Nemo? Anyway, <clears throat> um, this card's ability to allow you to look at your life now, if you, as you just seen in that whole little play test that we did, we did have a brother in life. So this card's ability to, and we did, we had a baby brother and a larger brother. They were actually corresponding. So having this card in the deck and being able to look at your life to see if you have any of your pieces in life is very, 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 very useful and puts, and puts you in a much better position to win the game. Having knowledge of your life is is insanely crucial in this like i said especially if you know that there are pieces that you want or some sort of setup you can create so that you don't have to like wait to use leader ability so that you can like just like uh use it a little bit earlier if you need to or you know what i mean because there are instances where putting two dawn on lead can be taxing because you don't have like the dom manipulation for that because you have to kind of sort of choose between defending yourself or using leader ability or going um you know what I'm saying? I'm going like, like I said, finish yourself things deeper. There's no more than that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so this is <clears throat> this is super good. Like I said, for making your leader consistent, because again, as you did see, we started off with two of the brothers in that opening hand. So that means that there are, there were three cards we could not use with leader ability. There were two cards in our hand that we couldn't use with leader ability because we had no way of placing those back into the deck to be able to use leader abilities consistently. Like this card allows for that. And this card allows for really cheeky setup plays too. Um, there was a play that I discovered uh, yesterday 
that was really, really, really cool. And again, I, I, I keep learning this deck as I play it, but um, it included the pudding. And this is another reason why I say pudding at four is just a must in this deck. It is so important to have four pudding in this because it puts your opponent in, in a very, very bad position. Um, because uh, again, as I've been test playing this deck and I had the four putting in there, I'm much more comfortable with just swinging aggressively in my opponent's face. This is why I say if you open up with a pudding, keep it. Because <clears throat> essentially, like I say, open up with a pudding, open up with a Makono, and you have the ability to go rush ace leader on your uh, second turn. By the time, like I said, if you're going second, by the time you get to 8-9, let's just assume that on the previous turn you played this. Uh, one of the, the most insanely cheeky plays I had, dude, I was I was, I was was blown away by the play, actually. I'm not going to even fake it to you. Not to toot myself on the back, but just to just to give the deck its, its due justice and, you know, just to kind of sort of clap the deck on the back, and not even myself, but the ability that this thing has. But, um, uh, one of, like I said, one of the cheeky plays that I was able to pull off was on sixth on turn, I summoned this creature, uh, set my top life to be a rocket Luffy. I had a, another Luffy in the hand and I believe that I had a, a rush ace on the board. Um, for the remainder of my dawn, I went five at his leader. He went ahead and uh, counted out, and then I went 10 with ace and he took this, put him at two life on his turn, uh, at end of his turn. He had eight cards in his hand, and he had focus getting rid of the. Uh, he had focus trying to get rid of the uh, the ace off of my board because again it was just uh, it was a good opportunity to swing at my leader. But he also recognized that like he needed to get rid of the ace. So um, I, I do believe he wound up like getting rid of my blocker, and he wasn't able to get rid of the ace. And the following turn, because I had played the blocker and had that set up, uh, on a down turn, I was able to go putting his hand down to five, um, use leader skill for two, uh, put my rocket Luffy to my life, summon my baby Luffy, and was able to pop his blocker and just continue my push for aggression. It was a it was it was a it was an insane play. Uh, and like I said, once I performed it, I was just like, God, that's, that's nutty. So nutty. Um, well, like I said, that's a really good oppressive, like, combo that this deck can do. Again, like, cards that you want to see in the early game, like, that are very, very important to see in the early game, like, they're so important to see in the early game, are going to be like, like your 2Ks, honestly. Um, <clears throat> because these, like, the Hiori, the Hiori, uh... This combo right here is insanely powerful, and if you have it, then then you want to use it. And this essentially, if you have an ace, if you have like an ace in life or a baby ace in hand, or like I don't know, vice versa, then these two allow you for your turn to play to be able to set up for this ace swing. So you can turn one play the. Makino down to take a life to look at the rest of your life and then on your second turn you'll be at three dawn which you can just use to swing high at your opponent and then your opponent will swing at you which will put you at two dawn um well, your opponent can swing high with you to put you at two life and then like i say so on so forth you'd be down to one life if you were to use this combo to switch to use a hero to switch out to swing <clears throat> but it does start you off with an early game regression. Um, or even if you didn't want to early game take the life, then you could just, on your 5 dawn turn, um, if you already took one life the turn before, then you can go ahead and play the uh, the combo that we just talked about. So then you'll be at exactly 3 life if you have a Hiori in hand. Or like I say, if you, if you see that you have any of the corresponding in your hand, that like I say, this just really helps you set up for the the turn two aggressive play because like i said this is your best turn two play right here uh after you after you've been if, you, if you're going second and your opponent has swung at your life and you took one this is this is this this combo right here is the deck's best opener to be able to go down to two life and be a 7k base leader with a 7k five cost body on board and your opponent's only at five dawn like I said, it's 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 a va it's very oppressive for your opponent, and that's why it's, again again I harp the four pudding because nine times out of ten they'll probably take those two life just to have a healthy hand size and just to be greedy because they'll feel like well I don't want to discard two and then next turn if I don't have a way to get rid of this ace 
then I'd be fucked. And then he have another 9K swing with leader. So I'd rather just keep a healthy hand size to deter them from swinging. And that's when you're just putting them. And like I said, even if even if if they do counter out heavy, then again, you're still just playing aggressively and they just don't have cards in the hand. They're just forced to hope to see blockers. Like your opponent can get super lucky and just see every single blocker in their deck and every single 2K in their deck. And like, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. But like if they're not that insanely lucky, then then you're just going to blow them out because after the pudding... Like I said, cards like uh, Gravity Blade and Blade Slice become extremely, extremely, extremely oppressive to your opponent. Because one of the big things that your opponent would do is play like a, a four cost small chunk blocker. Uh, the only the only deck where this <clears throat> this card doesn't shine or work nearly as well against is Black Luffy because he'll increase the cost of his characters. So like their Rebecca blockers. Uh, will be five costs so you won't be able to rest them <clears throat> which is like i say the only the actual only downside to playing this card but again black luffy needs late turns to be to essentially be able to set up to continue and because this deck is so oppressive in the early game black luffy just has to black luffy pretty much just has to see their pieces because again, if you're able to putting them, then it's not like with uh, other black decks, or it's not like with a CP where they have not only the ability to search uh, most of the cards that they need, but also uh, be able to push cards to the grave drawer to cycle. Um, so they, they they don't focus as hard on the board KOing. They just have board KOing in the deck. <clears throat> so uh, again, if they don't if they don't see those, then then you can just run over that deck pretty easy. Like I said, they um. Uh, I still, like I said, the body matchup is still uh, pretty much the same. Like, you just want to hold on to your gravity blades and your um, puddings. Uh, rush them down, swing with sequence. Like I said, the biggest thing that they're going to do at the end of the game is probably going to try and play a kid and then, like I say, a blocker. But if you, again, if you have the blade slice and if you have 7K bodies, your opponent isn't like super comfortable with the kid on board because you're not having to invest a whole hell of a lot to swing into him. You've got, you've got bodies that can combat him. So again, if you can keep your opponent's blockers off of the board, then, then like I said, it, it becomes a very, a very easy matchup. Like I said, I don't, I don't think that blade slice should be taken. I'm sorry. I don't think that gravity blade raging tiger should be taken out of the deck because it's so important for a lot of your matchups that you are going to come into the Luffy matchup, the green matchup in general, even the black matchup from where they try and uh, play multiple blockers. Uh, you just need this gravity blade to be able to clear those bodies. And it's very, very important that you have something in here to at least clear uh, small chunk blockers or little bodies off the board or even prob small problematic bodies off of the board. Uh, this card is the one that's going to allow you to do that. That's why you need to run this because every deck essentially needs board removal. If it doesn't have board removal, then it's it's playing behind essentially because without the ability to either manipulate your opponent's monsters or like i say remove them from the board entirely then your deck is behind in its functionality because it can't it can't keep up because it doesn't have the ability to keep monsters off of the board the only deck that doesn't care about this is nami because you know nami's just come at me bro you know what i'm saying so you want to make sure that you have some sort of board removal uh if you are not playing the gravity blade raging tigers then the uh what's it called what's it called red rock is also a good substitute for the deck if you're not going to play red rock then the six cost jozu is also good for the deck because that will allow you to bounce your 2k is back to your hand that you played earlier your searcher is back to your hand that you played earlier even like your small uh blocker that you play back to your hand to possibly try you know defend yourself on a nine down turn you can like i said return the blocker return one of their cards summon the blocker rearrange top and have a good setup for the next turn while also establishing a powerful body while also removing a creature from your opponent's board while also defending yourself effectively with the blocker like I say, again, uh, having, having like I say, the 2Ks that manipulate your life is really important. The only other 2K that you want to see early and the only other time that it's really useful, there are very niche situations that your your 2Ks become not 2Ks in late game. 
but like I said, they're very niche and few and far in between. But like I say, your 2Ks, they're, they're like in the start of the game, like I say, if you open up with these, they're like your bread and butter. Like I say, if you open up with the, the uh, God Hand with the Hiori, then that's amazing. That's why you play the four Hiori. But like I say, opening up with these two, you just, if you're going first, then that's the only reason that you want to play, oh, see these in your opening hand, because it allows you on your second turn. And you're already seeing that you're going to have a pretty consistent ability to hit with leader. So on second turn, if you use leader ability and hit something, play a flampe to get whatever you hit and a card to hand. Get, like I said, it gives you really good starting hand presence. And it makes it so that you're really comfortable not just taking that first but second life. And as long as you're not playing blue, purple, then you're really fine. Because in blue, obviously you can get pudding. And in purple, you can get a... Um, Log, so just keep that in mind uh pudding is a lot more painful than law like if you get logged it's it's really not that horrible yeah it takes cards from your hand but you've probably already removed from your hand things that your pilot could possibly hit from you that's why when i'm playing against purple or black and i know that i can be going into a um uh each turn or into a law turn i always keep that in mind and try and top deck a card that i want to make sure my opponent isn't able to remove from my hand Pudding is just devastating. You can't do anything about a pudding. Like, pudding just hurts. Like, there, there's no if, answer puts about it. Pudding resets whatever your top end was and uh, completely, completely nullifies whatever you had planned, which is a super, super, super effective against you. I don't mean to give out the, uh, the beans against the deck, but, like, uh, playing a pudding against this deck, it really, it, because this deck is so, I have to plan three turns ahead, it, it, it nullifies everything you just planned. You have to come up with a new strategy from there and that can be a little difficult because it's a new strategy from scratch essentially because you already like had a way on how you're going to work it your way up and like take out your opponent so whenever that happens it's just like well not only do i not have my top end if i don't have my babies then i don't have anything really i'm like dead in the water uh and having to use dawn to like use your search events is really really kind of sort of detrimental because you need as much dawn as you can uh to be able to use leader ability and a baby effectively this is the only reason why i say i'd, I'd put back the thank you for loving me into the deck because it's it being a one cost search and be able to set up top end is super super effective because again if you see two luffy's the corresponding luffy's in your hand a baby and an adult you can grab baby and set adult to the top and then be able to use leader ability or even if you like, uh, like even if you have like a, a ace and uh, the three drop blocker, then it's really it's really helpful to be able to go into the white bear card. And if you like, I say if you see an ace, the two corresponding aces on top, then you can say grab the this ace because you can't grab this ace. Set this to top, and then play the the blocker to grab this, and then set this ace to top, and then use leader ability to put this to top to summon this to play out. Uh, that's like an eight down turn. But like I say, it's 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 a very effective a don turn. Like I said, that's the only reason that I, I I I would like to put the thank you for loving me back into the deck for like sort of those niche card combinations which do come up and are important. And those interactions, like I said, they do matter. They may be small, like I said, they may be niche, but they're very important towards the grander whole of what you're trying to achieve in the deck. <clears throat> but like I said, uh. Hopefully this deck just helps you with your sequencing and your eyes and knowledge of probability. Like I said, you want to always keep in mind the amount of brothers that you've taken out, seen, bottom decked, and everything that you've went through thus far. Because there has been a lot of situations to where, because I've been mindful of what I've bottom decked the entire way through, I can comfortably play a Garp and be like, oh, I'm pretty sure that because I haven't been through 10 cards of the deck, there's a high probability, and I haven't seen my baby like this. Very, like, say, like I need an ace, and I've been through, like I say, t uh, 25 cards, or let's say I've been through 30 cards, and I haven't seen an ace yet. There's only 10 cards in the le in, left in the in the deck that I don't know what they are. I'm going to be very confident playing, like I say, a searcher or an ace, or a searcher or an uh 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 like a searcher, and trying to find the card from. The top of my deck because i know at that point okay there's only five cards i don't know what they are i know if i play another searcher i am going to get the cards that i'm looking for 
So, like I say, little situations like that are important. Uh, knowing when you cycle through the deck so that you know if you are or are not going to hit your leader ability for, like, in-game scenarios is important, too. All of that is super crucial, super important, super, like, things to think about when you're playing to make you, say, the leader more consistent and make your ability to play the deck more consistent. But that is the, I can say, the sequencing uh, for the deck. That's just, like, a little bit more information on Ace. Uh, I'll be, like I said, I'll be doing a couple more of these videos, like these little deep guides on how to play so that you have a better understanding. Uh, I've seen like a lot of lists. I've seen like a bunch of different play styles. Like all of them seem like really, really cool. I'd really like to try a bunch of them out just to see how they run. But um, this is pretty solid. Like I said, I've been doing a lot of test play into the meta and I, I'm very, very comfortable playing this into the meta. I'm, I, I think that I've learned the deck enough and I've played it enough, like I said, I've gotten my ass kicked enough to where I know what I'm trying to do, what the goal of the deck is, what I need to be doing at certain points in the game versus certain decks to ensure that I'm putting myself in the driver's seat. It's It has been a journey, but it's super fun. So I do say, like, if you're having trouble with your ace list or you're having trouble just with ace in general, just try and find, like, a way to make him more consistent. Once you find that way to make him more consistent and you just learn him as a leader then he's super aggro and super oppressive to your opponent. Like I say, having the ability to remove cards with Rocket Luffy and the um, <clears throat> the Gravity Blade plus the the uh, Blazing Strike, whatever it's called. Those those three cards in and of themselves, have being able to help you control board and remove units is super useful for the deck, and that's what helps again keep it in that competitive range and consistent range because again you're always you're almost always going to see the cards that you want to see because uh like i say how the deck works um like if i opened up well like i say i want to see a pudding so there's the puddings um but even if i were to shuffle up let's just you know what i mean i'm gonna do this before we're gonna get out of here i swear but like i say like uh if i wanted a pudding and i was looking for jesus flipping christ like i love this fucking pudding I just wish this would happen in real life very often because this is a banger. Like, oh my creamy goodness. Yeah, like uh, hands like this are awesome. Like, even if I didn't have a hand like that, like even, let's just see what my other open hand is. Like, this is, this ain't good, but it does come with two searchers. I mean, like, it ain't bad neither. Like, this is perfect for my end game. And like, you don't have to keep these cards. Like, uh, depending on what you get off the top five, like we're going to take one Garp and just use that as our next top five just to see. Uh, if we're in any good or bad positions. We do get a baby, which is cool. That does mean that like later on we'll be able to use leader skills. So I would, I would actually feel comfortable playing the second guard now. Uh, if it, if I was on like turn two, like I wouldn't feel comfortable playing it the first to go around because uh, like the second one, the first go around, like, eh, I don't know. But like establishing it now and then playing and then searching top five. But I'm not gonna do that because I just wanna like keep looking at like potential opening hands. But like I say, that like was bad and then look like it could solely potentially turn to something very very good um uh, it's like uh opener oh my god that thing uh this this comes with both the baby brothers so like this is this comes with both the baby brothers a pudding and a hiori that is an absolute keep that is a that's a banger of a hand right there um like yeah that's a that's that guaranteed seven swing the only thing that you would need out of this would be the the rush ace uh and you know uh, next turn, uh, two dawn on lead, uh, leader skill. Let's just see what happens. Ooh, no rush ace, but that's fine. It, like I said, it came with a brother, and it, like I said, if you open up with both of them, you really don't give a fuck. So, even on four dawn turn, if all I'm getting is a, a very potential large fucking, excuse my French, very potential large swing next turn, then by all means, I'll take that too. Uh, you'll still get that 9k swing with leader, and you still have the potential high swing with that and then you still have the other brother in hand so you don't mind blind leader ability again and like again as we just seen super consistent with hitting so you wouldn't be scared but if we're just going to draw one and then blind leader ability there's one of your whiffs which does suck but even if that wasn't a whiff and like i said that was a hand it's still a pretty banker hand <clears throat> but like like i say super consistent deck like even like i say if i were just keep just going through random hands most of the hands that you have with the deck still are going to let you use the deck 
like I say, the only thing that you just really want to open up with are baby brothers. And as long as you open up with baby brothers, the rest of the deck is just kind of sort of a cakewalk. You can you can manage the rest from there. If you don't see brothers, you're just going to be hurt throughout the most of the game. So like I say, that's why you prioritize your events and your guards. Because like I say, they're just, they're, they are the key to the deck. They are the key to what keeps your opponent from swinging at you. Your board can have a, your opponent can have a whole board full of fives. Having to invest two dawn per character to try and swing at you is hella hefty especially if you have six seven cards in your hand which on average if you're playing the deck correctly you should you should have an average of like six to seven cards in your hand throughout most of the game <clears throat> but that's a long video and hope this helped out a little bit more for anybody who's having trouble I'm gonna try and like i said keep releasing these so that you guys have a better understanding and that you know play ace for all my ace homies out there so um